Hi everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about grafting. And this is really an introductory lecture where we're going to go over some of the principles of grafting. And in the next one, the following lecture, we'll actually talk about some of the techniques. So to start, we want to define some terms, right? And importantly, we want to define what grafting is. So you're all probably familiar with grafting, at least to some extent. I know I've talked about it a little bit before. But if we're going to get technical, grafting is the art of joining two or more pieces of living plant tissue together in such a manner that they unite and subsequently grow and develop as one complete plant. Okay, so a bit of a long definition. Really what we're doing with grafting is we are joining two pieces of plant tissue together. Uh, to make them into one now new composite plant. So I have uh, Frankenstein, a poorly drawn Frankenstein up there. Uh, that's kind of always how I think of it, right? Frankenstein was made of uh, different parts of humans all sewn together. We're kind of doing that with grafting. We're taking different tissues, we're taking plant tissues from different plants and combining them to make one now new plant. So that is grafting and to understand this process, we need some more definitions. So in the process of grafting, you will come across something called a scion. And a scion is going to be the upper portion of the graft that's going to form the new shoot system. And as opposed to that, we also have what is called the rootstock. And you can probably guess what the rootstock is. That is the lower portion of graft. And that's going to form the new root system. Now we also have, might have something called the interstock, and this is in some cases where, going back to where I set up here two or more, right, with the interstock we're having a separate piece of plant tissue, so this is a third piece of tissue that we're, we're incorporating, and that is being inserted between the scion and rootstock. And we do this sometimes for a couple different reasons. Sometimes there may be some incompatibility issues between our scion and our rootstock. And if we put this inner stock in between them as this sort of intermediary, it could uh, allow for a proper graft union. Um, we can also add an inner stock sometimes for uh, to add some extra disease resistance. So there's some different reasons why we made that, may add that inner stock uh, component. But generally, when we're talking about grafting, we're talking about the scion and the rootstock. And just to give you a little um, visual example, right, we have this down here. This would be our rootstock with the lower portion. And honestly, we may have two seedlings or two cuttings that we made, and they both, both might have roots. But that red is going to be our rootstock, and the green is going to be our scion. 
So what we would do is we would take our red here and we're going to graph these together. So we'll make a cutting here. And now we have this. And again, we're going to say rootstock. Right, and then we can also make a cutting here. I'll just keep it there. Oh, just so you guys know, in case you can't see. Then we take a cutting there. And this is our scion. Scion. I don't know why that showed up red. And that's our scion piece. So we graft this scion piece onto our rootstock. And now as this thing grows, that's going to form our new shoot system. Where are, uh, oops, where, uh, come on. And then this is going to form our new root system, like so. Okay, so pretty easy. Scions, the top upper portion of our graft, it's going to be the new shoot system. Rootstocks, the lower portion of our graft, it's going to be our new root system. And then sometimes we have an inner stock. So if we were doing an inner stock, um, we may have a separate uh, piece of tissue plant stem here that we're going to insert and we would insert that somewhere right between these so it would be green or I'm sorry red sorry I'm not the wrong one red then our inner stock here and then green okay so that's some basics right there uh, a few more terms that you need to be aware of, one of which, actually both of these, we've already talked about. We have the, uh, why am I on blue? Black. We have the vascular cambium. Now this is a very important for grafting. The vascular cambium is meristematic tissue, which is growing tissue in our plants. And the vascular cambium it produces new oops, xylem and phloem. And if you recall from all the way back in the beginning of our course, our xylem and our phloem, uh, these are vascular tissues. Our xylem transports water, right? So that's taken up from the roots and transports it all the way up the shoot to the leaves. And our phloem, no, I should actually write that. And our phloem transports um, we refer to it as photosynthate. It's what our, it's the, I'm just going to say sugar, right? Remember our, through photosynthesis, our plants are making glucose, essentially a sugar that gets, those sugar compounds can get combined into larger, more complex carbohydrates. We're just going to say our phloem is transporting sugars. So this is the vascular tissue. This is, think of it like your arteries in your veins, right? So our xylem and our phloem are transporting water and sugar throughout the plant. So very, very important. So vascular cambium is going to need to be essentially created with our new graft. And actually, to give you a little idea, so this is going to be a little cross section of a stem, right? We're looking down on our stem. For our dicots, our vascular cambium is a cylinder of tissue. And then, to the outside of the cambium, it produces what we call secondary phloem, really just new phloem tissue, so that starts producing phloem to the outside. And to the inside, it produces xylem, which again is transporting our water. All right, so if we're looking down a little cross section. That's kind of what it looks like, just poorly drawn. Okay, vascular cambium. And then one other thing that you guys should be aware of is one other term is callus. And we talked about callus already with cuttings, right? Callus is just a 
mass of ring give ourselves that form um, around wounded tissue right so when our tissues when our plant tissues gets wounded it can form a callus which is like a mass of parenchyma cells kind of think of this you can kind of think of this as um, a clot or a scab that we that develops with us Right when we get cut and we are we develop a clot or a scab to kind of heal that over, it's kind of a similar idea with this callus. It's this mass of cells that is forming over this wound to protect the wound and then do some other things as we're going to see. Okay, so that is some basics that we got down, some general terminology. What we're going to look at now is the... formation of the graft union. Now we're not going to go too technical with it, but the graft union is the union of our scion and our rootstock, right? And that's really what we're trying to do with grafting. We want to have a union of these two separate plant tissues into now one new composite plant. Um, so what needs to be done, kind of the big step in this formation of the graft union, is we need to develop new vascular cambium. Right, so what I just talked about there, that tissue that forms the xylem and phloem tissue, this is going to need to be developed. We also have some other steps. We have to have the joining of xylem and phloem tissue between the parts. We're going to go into that. But this is one of the big things. We need the new vascular cambium to be developed. And this is going to be developed de novo, so new. Just like when we talk about cuttings, how some of our... Uh, stem tissue or roots have to be formed de novo. That's what's happening here. We have new vascular cambium that is being developed. So this process of forming a graft union has five steps that we're going to talk about. And again, we're not going in depth too much, but I kind of just want to lay out the process so you have an idea of what's going on. Right, so this first step isn't really something that's happening with the plant. This is something that we are doing as uh, propagators, right? So as performing the graft, we are trying to line up vascular cambiums of scion and rootstock. All right, so if you think about it, what needs to happen is we need to have, and we're gonna do a little drawing here, we need to have a new, we need to have a union of these two pieces of plants, right? And as part of that union, we need their vascular system to combine. And that vascular cambium is what is gonna produce that vascular system. So if we have our cyan up here, and this is our rootstock, again that vascular cambium is that ring that is typically in there. We want to try and match these up so those rings, that tissue, is close or as close to touching as possible. That's going to improve the chances of a successful graft. Now it's not always possible to do this exactly often. It's never gonna exactly match up. You wanna get as close as possible. You wanna try and get at least a portion of this matched up really well between the scion and the rootstock. And we can talk about that. We will talk about that when we go into the techniques. Um, but that's really, really important. So that's the first step. And that is something that we do as practitioners. All right, the next, the rest of these steps are gonna be uh, what's happening with our plants. All right, so we line up our vascular cambiums, we adhere our scion to our rootstock as best as we can, 
And then what's going to happen with our plants is initially we have a wounding response. Right, obviously we just cut these sections out. So our plants are wounded and they're going to respond. Uh, typically they're going to uh, form a necrotic layer. So necrotic just means dead. So all those cells right at the cut right here, they're going to form a layer of dead cells. Eventually those cells kind of um, get removed as this graft union forms. Sometimes there you may find pockets of those dead cells within the callus that we'll talk about. But this necrotic layer forms and it really forms, uh, it also helps to act to protect these cut stems from water loss or pathogens moving in. So that's our first, our second step of this process, kind of first step that the plant takes. After this wounding response, we have the callus bridge formation. And now our callus is going to form. So all those parenchyma cells are going to form a mass. So we have, uh, here's our Here's our thing here. So parenchyma cells are going to start dividing and form a mass right around our uh, where we're hoping to have our graft union, right? And this is just a mass of parench parenchyma cells. So we have this callus bridge that is made up of these parenchyma cells primarily. And this is helping to uh, both protect now these cut layers and so this helps for protection and then adhesion. Right, This is helping now our two separate plant or uh, tissue pieces or stem pieces, stem and root pieces to now adhere to each other. So they are binding to each other. So these parenchyma cells begin to proliferate and they interlock. And now we have these two sections uh, starting to form one. So after our callus bridge formation, we have the formation, oops, formation of, oh no, I hit a button again. Formation of wound repair xylem and phloem. And the um, new vascular cambium. So formation of wound repair xylem and phloem and new Vascular tenor cambium. Okay, so our callus bridge has formed, and the next step is that we have what is called wound repair xylem and wound repair phloem. So this is new xylem and phloem tissue that begins to make connections between the cuts. All right, so here is our graft. Here's our cyan up here. We have xylem tissue that may be here, and xylem down here, and then this is our callus right in the middle here. And it starts initially with the xylem tissue, so actually we'll just write xylem. So we have new xylem tissue that begins to form, and it's now bridging this union. Right, and likewise, we have phloem that's out here. Phloem, phloem, phloem. Whoops, 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 whoops. We got phloem tissue, and that phloem tissue is now going to bridge this union. Right, so now we are having our xylem and our phloem connected between our what previously were two distinct uh, plant pieces. So we now have a connected vascular system. And what also is occurring is we now have the development of new vascular cambium. 
And that's important because as this plant grows now, it's the vascular cambium that's going to produce what we call secondary phloem and secondary xylem. So just new phloem and xylem tissue as this thing gets bigger. That's really, really important. And then, as I mentioned, our fifth step, oh, and we're, we're blue, let's go back to black. Our fifth step is the production of secondary xylem and phloem from new vascular cambium. All right, so we have our new vascular cambium right here, and now it's going to start producing new uh, xylem and new phloem, which we refer to as secondary xylem and phloem. And now we have a successful graft union. We essentially have now one singular plant that is going to grow and develop. So that's the basics of our formation of our uh, graft union. I didn't want to get too uh, complex or too in detail. It's kind of a general overview. But if you guys have that down, you'll have down the basics of what's happening when we are grafting. So now we kind of talked about, you know, what's happening. We started out by defining our terms. We talked about what's happening when we form this graft. What I didn't talk about are the reasons for grafting. So why are we doing any of this? Or why are people doing any of this. Seems like a lot of work. Why take the time to do grafting? Well, there are a number of reasons why we may want to graft plants. So the first is that um, grafting allows for the propagation of certain species that propagation, and again, I'm just going to kind of talk so the writing may not look great, but allow for propagation of species that don't respond well to cuttings. So we may have a certain uh, species, and really this should be species, really species or cultivars. So we may have certain cultivars, certain species, that don't do well with cuttings. So we want to propagate them, and we're going to propagate them vegetatively. We can't really use cuttings on them. So there are certain cultivars of beech and oak and spruce that don't do well as cuttings. But what you can do is you can um, graft that cultivar onto a different cultivar that does do well, that does respond as a cutting. Uh, and that's going to allow for better propagation. All right, so we may use it for that. Another big reason for grafting is that we can combine beneficial character... Oh. This pen is giving me trouble today. Characteristics of multiple points. So this is kind of like with our Frankenstein plant. Right, and these characteristics could be a number of things. So we may have certain rootstocks in particular that are um, resistant to environmental factors. Right, so we may have certain rootstocks that are resistant to environmental factors or do better in certain types of abiotic environments. Uh, so they may do better with drought, or in wet soil, or in certain pHs, or deal better with salinity. So we may want the um, 
those characteristics, right, the ability to deal with these certain things, and combine them with a cultivar that produces something that, is, that we want it to produce, right, so a particular type of fruit, etc. So we can get some resistance to environmental factors. We may combine plants to incorporate resistance. Is that with an A or an E? Resistance? I don't know. Don't take my spelling into account. Resistance to pathogens. Again, this is frequently with our rootstocks. We may have rootstocks that are resistant to certain soil-borne pathogens, and we can graft on a scion that's going to grow and develop into a particular type of fruit that we want. So now in the our plant has this built-in resistance as well as the nice fruit that we like. So that's a, a common thing that we're going to combine. And then another benefit of where we can combine these characteristics is for controlling... Oh, stop it. Size of the plant. Right, so again, if we're talking about rootstocks and scions, there are dwarfing rootstocks. A lot of our nurseries have this. Um, where, uh, and actually you'll see in our lab, I used a dwarfing rootstock for our apple trees. So the rootstock is going to produce a mature tree that is a dwarf. This allows for a lot, uh, a number of things, easier maintenance, easier harvesting. So instead of growing a large tree, we can have a nice dwarf, dwarf tree that produces whatever characteristics we want, right? Because we graft on whatever variety. Okay, so that's another reason we combine these beneficial characteristics of multiple plants. Uh, what we can also do is um, hasten our plant growth rate. So this is with uh, certain species or certain cultivars. They do better uh, when they are grafted. So, uh, some plants grow faster when grafted, right? As opposed to growing them as cuttings or from seed. So we can hasten our plant growth rate. We can, uh, this is kind of important, we can change cultivar of established plants. So this could be important in a nursery operation where you are growing one variety of plant. Say maybe we're growing, it's, we have, we're in a peach orchard and we're having one variety of peach that we're growing and then all of a sudden that variety is no longer out of fashion or maybe there is a new variety that responds better to the environment or is more popular and we want to start growing that new variety. Well, instead of getting rid of all these plants, having to just scrap them and start new with new seeds or new cuttings, you can graft on that variety onto your established plants and now you have your new variety that's going to start growing. So this can be done, um, and it actually is done a lot of times with uh, different types of orchards. Although it does depend on where you're at. I think our book says in California, I, I took peaches because in California orchards, like every two to three years, they are swapping out their uh, cultivars through this process. So uh, another important reason for grafting we can also repair plants, and we'll look at this when we look at techniques. So we can do certain types of grafts that will help repair either the limbs or trunk or even roots of a tree that got damaged. So we can do repair grafts. And then lastly, we can do, whoops, that's a six, disease indexing. So this is really neat. 
Um, essentially, say you have stock plants. So your stock plants are a plant that you use to make cuttings from. And so each year, each season, you're going to take cuttings from this plant and you're going to plant them and from them you're going to grow new plants, obviously. Well, sometimes our plants carry viruses and just similar to what we're experiencing right now with COVID-19, for some plants, those viruses show no symptoms. So you may, they may be asymptomatic. Well, we have ways of testing for that where we have a plant that we know responds to the disease in a certain way. So this plant right here is going to respond to that virus in a certain way. For our example, it's going to turn red. <laughs> so what we do is we take a cutting from our plant, stock plant that we want to test, and then we graft it on to our plant here. And if our stock plant is carrying the virus, that virus gets transported into our plant, and then that plant shows the symptoms. So in this case, it would turn red, right? So another uh, important use for grafting. All right, now that is essentially the lecture, right? Pretty easy, talked about what grafting is, the, gave an overview of the process, and then the reasons why we do it. The last thing I wanna do is leave you with a couple additional considerations. So we'll say uh, additional notes. So a couple other things to consider. Um, there is something called budding budding is just a form of grafting but with budding our scion is a bud right really simple so we may have our this is our rootstock here and over this is going to be our scion and we have a bud that is growing here we remove the bud and then we graft the bud onto this plant and then that bud eventually is going to grow into a whole new shoot system. All right. So that is budding. It's just a particular type of grafting. And then the other thing that I want to mention uh, is the genetic limits to grafting. So you can't just graft any plant to any other plant. There are limits to the compatibility. And those limits generally um, are the result of how closely related those plants are from an evolutionary standpoint. So if you have cultivars within a species, they generally will graft, right? So different apple trees, apples, for example, if you can have different cultivars, different varieties, uh, Granny Smith, John of Gold, uh, Golden Delicious, Red Delicious, etc. Those are all different cultivars. They are all in the same species. So you can graft, generally graft those cultivars together. Now, sometimes you can graft different species that are within the same genus. Sometimes, right? So different species might be blueberry plants and huckleberry plants. They are both vaccinium. So they are in the same genus, that's the vaccinium. Um, but they are of different species. Sometimes you can graft uh, <coughs> excuse me, different species together. I actually don't know about blueberries and black huckleberries. That'd be interesting. <coughs> okay, so sometimes, same genus. Occasionally, you can do plants in the same genus or genera within a family, but this is rare. 
and that's pretty much the extent. Right, so you're you're safe if you're doing if you're grafting cultivars together. If they're the same species, you're going to be good. If they are of the same genus, sometimes you can get away with it. If it's the same genus in the, within the same family, or it's different genera within the same family, rarely it will work. Okay, that is it for now.